in uh, college algebra, we just simply called them uh, vertical and horizontal translations. And here we're going to call them a phase shift. And same thing applies as before now. Here I have a negative pi over 3 within the function. So this would take y equals sine x, take that graph, and simply moves to the right pi over 3 units. Okay? That's the effect of negative pi over 3 in parentheses. It takes this graph and moves everything, shoves everything over to the right pi over 3. Compare the two graphs. And it's really hard to tell on your calculator only because you're not seeing the units that are involved. But if you were to graph uh, y equals sine x, with uh, sine of, delete, let's write this as x minus left parenthesis pi over 3, close, close, that should shift everything. Here's y equals sine x, that whole graph gets moved over to the right pi over 3 units. Can you see that? whole graph got shifted over to the right. This one says graph y equals uh, 3 cosine times the quantity x plus pi over 4 over 1 period. When they mean by over 1 period, they want you to graph that whatever the one period would be. You'd have to figure out what one period is and they, then they would want you to sketch this graph you know roughly over that one period. So my questions to you would be what's the amplitude? Three. What's the period? Well that's two pi over b. What's b with this problem? b is one. Good because there's a one times the quantity x plus pi over 4, so this just ends up being 2 pi. So they would want you to graph this or sketch this from 0 to 2 pi. And then what's the pi over 4 do inside the parentheses? Positive pi over 4. Shoves everything to the left, shoves the cosine graph to the left pi over 4 radians. Okay? So far so good? We've covered A, B, and C. We've only got to cover D yet. How to move things up and down, which you already know how to do that. Now, tricky. This one's tricky. Again, I'm going to ask you amplitude, period, phase shift, and then eventually we're going to tack on to that vertical translations. But uh, let me show you why this one's tricky. You must always think of your parent graph being in the form of, and this also goes for cosine, in that form, meaning 1x, 1x in the parentheses. And if it is not 1x, you got to make it 1x. Okay? Look where we're at now. Oh, 3x. G, I wish that said 1x. G, I wish I could just take the 3x and divide it by 3. You can. As long as you make up for it by multiplying by 1 third. or multiplying by 3, I'm sorry. We want to divide by 3, so we want to make up for it by multiplying by 3. Do I still have the original problem? When you distribute the 3 through, right, don't I have the same problem? 3 times x, 3x, three, 3 times pi over 3 is pi. So now you've rewritten the problem, right, so now you can identify your a, your b, and your c. Don't have a d yet, but we will here with the last page. 
Amplitude would be 2. Period would be, well, what's B? B is now 3. So that would be 2 pi over 3. So if for every 2 pi over 3 radians, we would have completed a whole cycle. And it looks like this is going to take the cosine graph and move everything to the left, pi over 3 units. So you can start putting all these together to picture what the graph's going to look like. It's going to take, it's going to take the generic cosine graph. That one you can picture in your mind what it looks like. Take the cosine graph. Okay, what's this going to do? Well, instead of going from negative 1 to positive 1, it's going to stretch it up to negative 2 to positive 2, right? That's the effect of this. What's this going to do? Well, instead of one cycle happening from 0 to 2 pi, one cycle is going to happen from 0 to 2 pi over 3. So it's going to take the, the graph and kind of make, make more cycles per that many radians. And then finally, after all that happens, it's going to take the graph and move it all to the left, pi over 3 units. So the last piece to this puzzle is how can we take the graph after all of this happens and move it up or down, and you already have the answer to that. We're going to simply add or subtract something to the whole equation. So vertical translations, we simply add 3, take away 5. If you want to move it down 5, add 3 to move it up 5. So here we go. We have graph the following over two periods. Whatever one period would be, it's yet to be determined, but they would want us to sketch this over two periods. I guess we should try to do, sketch one of these by hand just to see how fun it is. We'll do the next one. We'll do the last problem. See if we can come up with what we think the graph's supposed to look like. And then we'll ask our calculator to see if it's the same looking graph. But let me just show you uh, the first one just to identify A, B, C, and D now. I'm going to take the original problem. I'm going to rewrite it. First, I'm going to rewrite it as Y equals negative 2 cosine 3x plus 3. They're always going to write the, uh, the vertical translation out in front. That's a positive 3. I'm going to move it to the end. Because now I recognize this as being how we're going to move the graph up or down. Uh, do I have it in terms of uh, 1x? I do. I do. You could actually think of this as being negative 2 times the cosine of 3 times x plus 0, right? 1, not 1. 1 x, yeah, but what I have here is the same thing as, so what I'm saying is we're, yeah, we're not, there's no phase shift. There's no phase shift. We're not taking the cosine graph and we're not moving it left or right at all. But what are we doing to the cosine graph? We're going to make it uh, go from negative 2 to positive 2. Uh, the period, we're going to actually shrink it and make, make it go through more cycles per period. So the period would be um, 2 pi over 3 again, from like the last problem. And there is no phase shift. However, we will take the whole graph and move it up 3 units. So now, listen. Yes, the amplitude is 2. Yes, the amplitude is 2. But now my question would be, what would be the largest and the smallest possible values? If we're going to move it up 3, picture the graph where the highest point and the lowest point not moved up would be 2 and negative 2. We're going to move everything up 3 units, 5 and 1. It will be 5 and 1. You got it? 5 and 1. Right. Simply add 3 to a positive 2, add 3 to negative 2, and you have your lower and your upper bound. Okay? Let's actually go out and try, try to sketch one of these by hand. Let's do the bottom one. Let's try to figure out A, B, C, and D again, because this problem has everything in it. 
we have to actually rewrite the problem to come up with phase shift and all that kind of stuff. So first off, let's take the negative 1 and put it at the end. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 2 sine 4x plus pi minus 1. So we're going to move everything down 1 at the end. Next thing I notice is I need it to be 1x. I get 4x's. So in my mind, I'm going to divide everything by 4, but how do I undo dividing by 4? I'm going to have to multiply by 4. So now we'll rewrite this as y equals 2 sine of 4 times x plus pi over 4 minus 1. I don't want to lose you, but do you see how I still have the same problem? Yeah, the reason I, see, I, I want to divide, I want this to be 1x. So I'm going to divide this by 4, which means I have to divide this by 4, which is what I have here. But then I just can't change the problem, so I make up for it by multiplying by 4. Because now I distribute the 4 through, I get my original problem. So amplitude is 2. Amplitude is 2 period will be 2 pi over 4, pi over 2. So every pi over 2 radians, right, it's going to complete a cycle. And it looks like we're going to move the whole thing to the left. So we're going to phase shift left pi over 4. And then it looks like that we're going to have a, um, a vertical translation. What do they call vertical translations? Do they just call? Just says translated vertically. So we're just going to call them vertical translation of down one unit.